to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. The Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by Uber. Uber Rewards is going to make you love Uber even more. Get all the info and terms at uber.com slash rewards. I'm in a different kind of studio. This is a special moment for me. I got middleweight champions. I got this man right here, Saul Canelo Alvarez. I got Daniel Jacobs here. And, of course, the great promoter himself, former great world champion, Oscar De La Hoya in the house. May 4th. T-Mobile Arena, middleweight championship. Why this fight, Oscar? Unification. When you have a unified championship fight, you're putting all the belts on the line. Canelo, Jacobs, you're going to get a great fight. No doubt about it. With the Miracle Man, what he's been through, what he's gone through in life, the strength that he has, the obviously his, uh, his technique and his abilities are amazing. And what can you say about Canelo? Canelo's a, he's a world champion, the best there is now, pound for pound. So the two guys are going to go at it, May 4th, all the belts. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to get to you in just a second. I got to get to you in a second. But before I do that, let me get to you. You just heard Oscar say, this man is the best in the world, pound for pound, number one right now. Number one, do you feel that way? And number two, if he is number one, where do you feel you're ranked? Well, I don't. I can't really, and nor do I get into gauging myself into the rankings. That's for the fans' perspective. But for Canelo Alvarez, he is definitely, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, uh, in the in the division mm -hmm. and in all of boxing. So, for my thing is though, I've always wanted to can be the best, mm -hmm. and in order to do so, you have to beat the best. Mm -hmm. So this is why this fight is so big because we're both the two best middleweights in the division, mm -hmm. and for us to go at it with our styles that complements each other, you know, you're going to get action. How would you beat him? Because I watched Canelo Alvarez. I'm getting ready to get into that. I watched this man. And listen, I watched the man fought. Uh, Triple G was a yeah. monster. You lost the decision to Triple G, but yeah. you fought a very valiant fight. He goes against Triple G the first go round. Okay, that ends up in a draw. Triple G is chirping, saying, where was the Mexican-style fighter? This guy goes a rematch against Triple G and walks right to him. Mm -hmm. Right to him. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'm saying, <laughs> doesn't that make you a little bit fearful of going against this Well, man? fearful, absolutely not. Okay. Never fearful of any man. I mean, this is a sport. Uh, we're going in there. We're both talented guys. But he has his possession of skill, right? No doubt about it. And the most thing is the experience that he has. Mm -hmm. So I have to take that in consideration. But the respect that I give is making sure that there's no stone unturned in training camp. Mm -hmm. The respect that I give is making sure that I prepare 100% so that I could be ready come fight night. So, Canelo Alvarez, I think right now there's... You're unquestionably number one in the world. I mean, your box office, everywhere you go, we can't get enough of seeing you. How much did the matches against Triple G help you in your eyes to get to this point? No, I think that and all the fights I've had have helped me to be the fighter I am today. A complete fighter with experience, with confidence above the quadrilateral. But of course, the fights with Golovkin me ayudaron muchísimo también para tener más confianza arriba del cuadrilátero, pero eh, soy, un, soy un peleador que le gusta aprender, pelea con pelea. Go ahead and interpret, Oscar De La Hoya. Every fight, uh, every fight has given him the experience, but the Golovkin's fights obviously gave him that much more experience, but he's a fighter that loves to learn. He's a fighter that's growing and loves to learn. You know, it's interesting. And by the way, Oscar De La Hoya was interpreting for me. We don't have an official interpreter here. I got Oscar De La Hoya. I it, do it, doesn't, all, baby. it doesn't get much better than that. But, but, but Canelo, let me say what you But you, you know what? I know, please, I, know, I know how. If I was fighting Canelo, I know how to beat him. How would you beat him? Taking up a bat. <laughs> okay, I like that. I like that. I like hey, that. Surprisingly, <laughs> my, surprisingly, my right hand is called bat. So that's right. That's we never right. know. You know, and, listen, and I'm coming back not, to you in a yeah. second. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm coming back to you in a second. For you, for a while, we looked at you welterweight division. And then, obviously, you go to your middleweight. Middleweight division now, you bring your knockout power with you. I think that surprised some people. It really, really shocked me in the rematch against Triple G how you walked towards him. Was it because of his mouth, or was it because of the fact that you wanted to prove to everybody, excuse me, I can be a slugger, I can walk right to you and take your punches, and we know I can give it. What was your agenda going into that rematch against Triple G? Eh, todo lo que, lo que rodeaba la pelea, pues obviamente me hizo todavía hacer ese tipo de pelea, ¿no? Pero eh, desde la primera pelea, después de la pelea vimos, sabíamos que se iba a hacer la revancha, Entonces, Eddie eh, y yo propusimos o dijimos que eh, 
a él se le tenía que pelear hacia adelante, ¿no? Hacia adelante y, y era como más se le dificultaba y e hicimos esa estrategia desde... De, la pensamos de, 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 después de que le hicimos la primera pelea. Yeah, every, everything surrounding the fight uh, made him fight that way, but uh, more so was his trainer, Eddie Reynoso, who came, comes up with a game plan. He said that uh, in order to beat Triple G, you have to make him, you have to push him back. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they did. What about you? When you fought Triple G, A, was that your strategy? And B, do you think you can employ a similar strategy against this man? Well, here's the thing. Um, we both have experience with Golovkin fight, but we're two totally different fighters. Explain so you, how. Uh, we're both boxer punchers, and we both possess different attributes. Okay. And with the Golovkin fight, he has his own style. So you can't expect for Golovkin or, excuse me, Canelo to have the same success. I'm a different style. You know, I can switch softball. I can go side to side. Canelo just comes, I'm sorry, uh, Golovkin just comes forward. Mm -hmm. So in preparing for that, you have to be ready for everything that I bring to the table. And I'm going to use a Jay-Z quote that I love. So this is the mentality that I have going into the fight. If you want to bang, we could bang. If you want to brawl, we could brawl. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do, it's all right. I can respect that. Yes. Here's my concern, Daniel Jacobs. Yes. Now, as a welterweight, you know, Amir Khan, glass jaw, mm -hmm. what it, it is what it is, okay? Plus, he is the welterweight division. Mm -hmm. The man knocked out a dude by the name of James Kirkland who had that same kind of attitude, even though I predicted that, that he was going to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. We haven't found... There's an APB out for James Kirkland. I don't even know what the hell he is. We haven't seen him since Canelo put him to sleep. Okay, that was just an ugly, <laughs> ugly knockout. Now, do you as a middleweight Look at those guys and say, they're not me, they're smaller, they can't take a punch, they can't give it the way that I give it. Or is there something inside of you that sees those kind of things and say, I need to be concerned about going up in the ring against somebody like this? You always have to be aware. You always have to be concerned. You have to have uh, the precautious mindset when you're stepping into a ring with a great contender such as Canelo, excuse me, champion. Mm -hmm. So with my mentality going inside the ring, I just want to make sure that I'm on my best using my best attributes, whether that's my range, because to me, that's my best uh, uh, attribute that I have over him. It's my, my height, my body, my physique. I'm actually a naturally bigger fighter. And all those guys that he fought that he knocked out were smaller than me, shorter than me. So it posed a different threat when you're actually in there with a bigger guy. And come fight night, I think when he looks across the ring and he sees the sheer size, Matching the talent, matching the speed, it's going to be a long night. Oscar De La Hoya, Daniel Jacobs, old Canelo Alvarez, right here with Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Oscar, how important is this fight to boxing? It's, it's uh, just as important as uh, watching a uh, heavyweight unification fight, like back in the old days, for instance, when Mike Tyson was fighting, with, when Muhammad Ali was fighting. This, this fight here, the middleweight division, is the division. The best is going up against the best. There's no doubt about it. When people talk about boxing, they go back to Sugar Ray Robinson, mm -hmm. who was the middleweight champion of the world. Mm -hmm. This is the equivalent uh, of being the Super Bowl of boxing. I'm going to stay with you for this second, Oscar. Here's what I love about this fight. Neither y'all are undefeated. Mm -hmm. You know why I love that? Because I thought we got to a point, particularly in the quote-unquote Floyd Money Mayweather era, where people thought... If you had one loss on your resume, somehow that took away the luster of a marquee boxing matchup. But y'all are reminding us, excuse me, even with a loss, or in your case, too, on your resume, you can still be elite. It can still be a mega fight. Do you feel that way? Do you feel that's an important message to send to the public <laughs> when we look at this, this the landscape of boxing look, today? My, my motto in boxing is, if you don't have a loss, you haven't been fighting the very best. Mm. Easy as that. Plain and simple. I like that. I like that. And I know where you're going with that, but I'm not going to take it there. <laughs> Oscar De La Hoya. So Canelo Alvarez, Daniel Jacobs right here with Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. So you go up against Daniel Jacob. Talk to me about what you know about this fighter and, and, and what concerns you about going up against him. No, obviamente sé, sé todo, ¿no? Sé el peleador que es, sé la calidad que tiene como peleador, sé que... Eh, lo he visto pelear, es un peleador que se maneja muy bien arriba del cuadrilátero, maneja las dos guardias, un peleador fuerte, y, y, y eso a mí me motiva, eso me gusta, ¿por qué? Porque me gustan los retos, y, y pelear siempre con lo mejor, eso es lo que me gusta, y darle a la, a la gente grandes peleas, a lo que le preguntabas a Oscar, eh, no, no, no que importe tanto si y cuidar tu, tu invicto o no, 
aquí son peleas donde puedes perder, puedes empatar, puedes ganar, ¿no? Pero eh, lo importante es dar las mejores peleas y que quede satisfecho también contigo mismo. He said, muy bien, and it is very good. He said, importante, that's the point. <laughs> he said, and he said, oh, you know, I know, you know. <laughs> go ahead, Oscar, interpret that for no, me. No, no, he, he, knows, he knows everything about Daniel Jacobs. And, 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 and the reason why he's so motivated is because he loves the challenges, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and he goes back to what I had said, look, I mean, if you're going to fight great fighters, if you're going to be involved in great fights, you're either going to win, lose, or draw. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. And so these types of challenges motivate Canelo, and that's why he's in this sport, because he, he loves training hard and getting motivated for these types of challenges. I'll get the response to this question from you and you, Oscar and Daniel. If Canelo loses this fight, he's still Canelo out. People will look for a rematch. People will still, he's still very popular, et cetera, et cetera. If Daniel loses this fight, we don't know what may happen. I think he'll still be fighting. He'll still be winning most of his fights, et cetera, et cetera. If he were to lose, I'm talking about the politics of the sport. That's sure, what I'm sure, going sure, to sure. So I'm asking you this question. When you go into a fight like this and seeing the imbalance in terms of popularity, I mean, you had folks following him when he was in your backyard right here in New York promoting the fight. How much do you believe, or in what way do you believe that affects the fighter that isn't perceived as being as popular? Well, I, I think I think the way it affects him uh, uh, is is in a positive way, you okay. know, in in a, in a motivating motivating way, you know. I mean, I remember when I was a fighter, if if somebody didn't like me. I wanted to train harder and, 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 and be at my very best. And beat him up, Fernando Vargas. Go so, ahead. Keep but, going. but look, right. I mean, it's like if they beat Tiger Woods in golf, it still doesn't make you Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods is still Tiger Woods, mm. you know? So you ask me if, let's say, something happened and Canelo lost, mm -hmm. right? Because Jake was, you know, was the better man that night. Mm -hmm. Well, he's still Canelo Alvarez. Right. You know, he's, he's, still, he's still that Tiger Woods. But what about him? And... Daniel Jacobs becomes a superstar mm -hmm. because of Canelo Alvarez. Right. But now, now you have a great rivalry. That's right. Speak on that. I think it's absolutely true. Um, and the politics of boxing is out of my control. I just do my job. And the fact that I'm in this position really, really motivates me because being the superstar that he is, going inside that, I think being successful – no controversy and being decisive with my victory, I think I can snatch all of that that's on it, that side. You weren't the popular fighter against Triple G. Right. I remember you feeling like you won that fight. Right. You didn't get the judges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that add pressure to you in terms of going into this fight, knowing his popularity is similar to what Triple G's popularity, at least to some degree, was at that particular moment in time? Does that alter your game plan in any way? Does that affect you? Absolutely not. Um, Triple G is a completely different fighter, so with Canelo, I just feel more confident, uh, even though I was extremely confident with Triple G. It's just a different level, and now that I've experienced and gained that experience with Triple G, I just feel like I'm at my peak now, I'm at my very best, and that there's no stopping me, especially a motivated uh, Daniel Jacobs inside the ring. Do you feel you're the best in the world, Canelo? Hey. Yo siempre me he sentido como el mejor eh, desde, desde que iniciaba hasta, hasta, la, hasta el momento. Pero no me gusta ponerme en un lugar ni me interesa mucho si dicen soy el tercero, el segundo, el primero, libra por libra. Realmente no me preocupo por eso, me preocupo por, por, por entrenar, por hacer mi trabajo y dar las, las mejores peleas. He's always felt uh, that he's the very best, you know, but it, it doesn't really concern him or worry him that or he doesn't like categorizing himself being number three number two number one pound for pound he just does he likes doing his job mm -hmm. he loves what he does and uh and he loves you know giving great fights now you're hanging out with this guy let me tell you something about this guy this guy's a champion but he's also an elite businessman okay and you seem to have a very business-like approach like i'm just gonna go in there do my job take people out <laughs> and that's it is there somebody in the sport because you seem to really want Triple G that rematch. 
Is there somebody that you really, really want where you look at Daniel Jacobs, you respect him, you know he's somebody that you can't take for granted, but at the same time, you, there's somebody that you're itching to get into the ring with. Your hair stands up on your skin because <laughs> you just want him that bad. For him, it was a Vargas, if I remember correctly, because he was talking so much right. smack about you. Is that guy, Does that guy exist for you? Uh, no, no, <laughs> creo que no, creo que... La única rivalidad grande que he tenido o por lo que se habló y todo es con Golovkin. Pero, pues, obviamente siempre que te subes al cuadrilátero te subes con la, con la misma motivación y las mismas ganas, ¿no? Pero siempre cuando hay una rivalidad así, pues, eh, es todavía extra. Pero no, realmente no, no, no he tenido la oportunidad de tener una rivalidad como la que tuvo Oscar con Fernando Vargas. You heard it from the man. Just right. No? No, no. <laughs> Before I let you guys get out of here. Prediction, is this fight going the distance? I don't think so. Is this fight going the distance? I don't think so. <laughs> is this fight going the distance? I don't think so. <laughs> so in other words, y'all sitting across from Tune one in. another, Tune fully in. intent on putting the other to sleep, telling us they ain't going to go 12 rounds. And that's what you're banking on. I'm, I'm, uh, I know a little bit about some boxing. <laughs> he does, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oscar De La Hoya, Daniel Jacobs, <laughs> Saul Canelo Alvarez, surrounded by champions. I feel privileged. I feel privileged. Mm -hmm. Back with more of the Stephen A. Smith Show in a minute. Craving even more of Stephen A. Him of all people. For around the clock.